Hi, so a while ago I did a video on how to take an airbag off a Peugeot and Citroen car. Today I'm going to take out some of the mystery why the horn and airbag actually fails. So this switch assembly is off a Peugeot and the same as a Citroen. And you can see it's got a dual airbag assembly. So depending on the force, either half the airbag goes off or all of it. This is the horn. Now in this particular case, this switch assembly was from a scrapyard. I bought it because I needed this button on the end of this stalk. I bought the wrong one, so I've kept it. But the, the horn was intermittent. And what you've got in all these wires, and I'll take this apart and show you the main cause why these go wrong. You've got two, two or three copper strands in this insulated plastic. Now in this one, as I said, it's from a breaker's yard. It was bent here. And that's why my horn was intermittent. But as I say, this was second hand. But the airbag was actually okay. But I'm getting a lot of questions why does a horn and the airbag stop? So I'll take this apart and show you why. Ordinarily, when your car's assembled, these are going to be connected to the airbag and the horn switch. And left alone, these obviously aren't going to bend. They're just going to stay put. So this wouldn't ordinarily break there. But I'll show you what does break. Right, in case you don't want to break your unit, when you remove the steering wheel, this rotating assembly, continuous coil of wire, this locks in a certain position, and on the Peugeot and Citroëns, and other makes besides, you've got this bit here, it's meant to, meant to lock it, but you can see a pointer here, you're meant to lock it, keep it in that position when the steering wheel's off. If you lose the position, if I move this pin out of the way, if you lose the position and you've already turned this maybe once or twice one direction when you put the car back together if you turn the steering wheel two or three times to the left and this hadn't been centered you're going to break the internal wires so if I lift this off so make sure you center this first and try and lock it there we go so this is a metre or so of tape wire. This gives you a continuous connection to your airbag and horn assembly. No matter how you turn the steering wheel, the airbag is permanently connected. And what happens, this is an old one. You can see here, it starts to, over the years, it starts to kink. Do you see, hopefully you can see that flat bit just there. And what happens, so with a continuous turning, left and right, one, do one direction it winds up, so that you get the idea, hopefully. It will wind up one, one direction, and as you turn the other way, it will unwind. That's the inside of your steering wheel switch assembly. And so what have we got? Two, three, and another two. So you've got seven wires in this assembly. The continuous winding up and unwinding, this wire eventually breaks. And that's why your horn and airbag becomes intermittent. Sadly it's too difficult to repair this cable, you really just throw the switch away. So that's the general cause of a horn and airbag failure one of these wires has broken internally. As I say, if you want to take it apart to inspect it, make sure you centre this first. And once the steering wheel's off, don't turn it so many turns one way. On the Fords, they would say, turn it one direction until it tightens up, and then turn it back three turns, and that will put the steering wheel wiring in the middle. I'm not sure how many turns these Peugeots and Citroëns, that sort of stuff does. But this applies to virtually every car out there. So this is the electronics inside a Peugeot and Citroën switch assembly. And I believe this does the remote control locking as well. I'm not sure if this is a radio module down here. A small crystal there. And the various microcontrollers for this communicates with the fuse box. For all the indicators, wipers, that sort of stuff. Or trip control. So if I zoom into one of these airbag plugs, 
hopefully you can see there's a metal strip here so when you unplug the wiring go into the airbag control unit probably under the dash or under the seat to protect the airbag against any spurious voltages as you unplug the receptacle from here there's this shorting link and this link bridges those two connectors to stop any voltage inadvertently setting off the airbag. So if you want to test the continuity through here it's best to actually probe the wires or probe the back of the plug with it still connected and see if you've got sort of 8 ohms for the airbag. Some of the seatbelt tension is a 2 ohms but in my experience most airbags on steering wheels are about 8 ohms steering wheels and same for passenger airbags about 8 ohms anywhere where there's a bit of wire that's either moving or turning so under the seat and in the steering wheel assembly that's the weak point so the wires are always going to break after so many years so if you see so you can see this link if you obviously put a meter on these two pins it's going to be a dead short so put the plug back in and maybe probe the wires or stick the probes into the back of the plug hopefully that makes sense hopefully that's a better view there so you can see the uh, the bridging link to bridge the two pins so anytime you unplug like the airbag or the wiring to the airbag the airbag side the part with the explosive is always going to be protected with a short circuit. Right, so I've done a quick sketch on the PC. So you, you'll see the airbag module generally bolted to the chassis or a solid part of the car to measure the deceleration forces. Usually two sensors minimum. Modern cars have probably got more because of side impact protection, that sort of stuff. So that airbag module, you'll have various connectors running up to the steering wheel switch assembly. As I say, every time you unplug some wiring, this airbag side is going to have a short circuit to protect the airbag, stop any spurious voltages setting it off. It's okay to probe it. If you're able to remove this link or just probe the wiring, you'll have approximately 8 ohms on most airbags. That's the continuous loop I showed you, and that's the plug on the back of the switch assembly. On many modern cars this now also runs down to the seat belt and you've got a pyrotechnic seat belt tensioner and depending on the setup so when you have a crash the solid part on the car is actually retracted to tighten the seat belt because you can move the seat backwards and forwards the wiring under the seat often suffers. If your horn doesn't work and it's not the horn and it's not the fuse most likely this wiring suspect if you've got an airbag light on Nine times out of ten, it is this bit of wiring. If you're unsure, really take your car to a garage, get a diagnostic report, and see if it, it is it the driver's airbag, passenger airbag, or the seatbelt tensioners. Usually, this would flash once for the driver's airbag, twice for the passenger, and three and four times for the passenger seatbelt tensioners. So if you've got a car a few years old and the horn's not working and or maybe you've got an airbag light on that's why this wiring fails. Not worth trying to repair it as I said, just throw the whole unit away and get another one. These do cost nearly £200. Uh, I think you'll find cheaper copies on eBay. Hopefully this has helped. Thank you very much.